Welcome to another episode of Inside the Barrel, where we talk about behind the scenes, being a service now consultant. And today I have two amazing guests with me. Uh, and we're going to talk about the Tokyo release that's like alpha, like coming out really, really soon. So we wanted to give everyone a sneak peek of some of the research we've been doing for the last month and trying to you know, get ahead of um, when ServiceNow releases for customers to be able to, to utilize it. So I'll, I'll give it over to Ashu to introduce himself. Hey, thanks, Dorian. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'm Ashutosh Munod. I am a dev MVP and a community MVP. And I work in Netherlands with one of the insurance company as a solution architect. Dhruv, over to you. Uh, thank you for having me here, man. I am Dhruv Gupta and I'm just a dev MVP, not a community one. So I work at Accenture as a technical architect and yeah, having fun. There's a nice weather in London. It's cloudy. It might rain, it might not, but yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ashley, where, where are you located right now? In the Netherlands? Uh, I'm in, in the Netherlands. Yeah, what's, so, what's the weather like there? Today it's pretty good. It's almost 25 degrees Celsius, so which is very good in the Netherlands at least. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it's like 32 in uh, Portugal right now. Portugal. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we have action packed stuff. A um, couple of comments on this. Uh, ServiceNow normally gives like a safe harbor thing. Uh, we're not, we don't have the capability to give a safe harbor thing, but we'll tell you that this is all rumors. It may not come into the release. We don't work for ServiceNow, so we don't know anything other than uh, when it when it actually does get released. Um, we do know that tomorrow uh, early availability is supposed to launch. So if you have a developer instance, you should be able to install early access for Tokyo um, tomorrow. So. Hopefully, and then I know Chuck is doing a session on all of the cool things tomorrow as well. Um, so stay tuned for pretty much the next week and the next month of like tons of Tokyo related um, uh, versions, uh, release notes. Yep. Cool. So I created a little PowerPoint for us. So um, hopefully this is useful for some people um, to kind of go through. I wanted to talk about, this is an old picture. I know I got lazy and I couldn't find the new one yet. Uh, uh, ServiceNow releases. So they release twice a year and then each release has a bunch of features, patches and bugs. And then they also have smaller patches as well after the fact. And they, they have over the last year made it a lot easier to, to upgrade. The upgrade center has definitely improved a ton where you get previews of records and um, so call out to that team that has done a, a really good job on uh, making that easier. Yeah, and mainly here, I like the functionality to trigger ATF after the upgrade is done, which is a great feature which has helped us because if you have custom applications, if you have like 80, 90% of service now, and if you want to test everything, oh, it's it, it will take a long time. So ATF, yes. ATF along with instance scan, that is the way yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah, and I know I know our friend Mark is like the guru at instance scan. So mm. he has a community post about like 88 instance scan checks or something that he's built and given to the community. So if you haven't used any of the ins his instance scans, you should definitely check those out. Yep. Um, cool. So, uh, and we are going to talk about ATF at some point in here because there is a, a super awesome feature coming. So excited for that. But let's talk about anything related to APIs and core since we're more on the technical side anyways. Um, so I'll let, I'll let you guys think, oh, I haven't even like updated this, this slide. Why didn't it, that makes me really sad. Let me, uh, let me update this slide because I, I put new things on here. Uh, I should have auto refreshed, um, but I was already excited to talk about RPA. I saw the yeah, same one. here. RPA. That, that was on my highlight. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's talk about RPA. Start it. So there's some um, new APIs. Um, yeah, I mean RPA. If you see within R RPA is totally new for us. So I don't know if there is any customer out there who is already started using it. Uh, but it's really cute, uh, really great because I was in Amsterdam for the meetup and we did actually, so, the topic so. was RPA. 
yeah so we went through the rpa configurations how to do it how how it will actually help the organizations and which are the use cases which you can do like for example reading a word document converting it into a beautiful pdf document that can be the use case creating your uh, pos filling a form and for that rpa can be used um go for testing if, man testing of the your yes. not so wonderful machines that could be done and then you can use it in discovery of identifying those machines as well we used to say it was out, it was not available at the moment but now with rp you can do that and moreover uh, if you are using agent client collector or anything you can just use these apis i need to check what's there in those apis but it's a good thing to have those apis you can build your process around those using those apis yeah and i know i think at least for this one it was really focused on like queue and like being able to start and stop and queue um rpa so you can you know have some sort of automated process within it right like you're running some devops build or something like then you will be able to like you know trigger or queue up you know an rpa so it can then go and log into some you know old legacy yep. system and, and do something um, mainly so literally yesterday we had a discussion with one of our finance team where they want to automate uh few things within their process uh, with one tool which does not support api at the moment and for that we are evaluating if rpa can be used because out of the box we have three apis in the back end for rpa for starting the job starting the process and triggering the robot but let's see because there is always a contradictory discussion between ui path and rpa so we are having that battle at the moment <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, in RPA is new, so you're you're probably bound to run into you know a couple of hiccups as you go, and you'll you'll learn, and it'll provide feedback for for service now. But so, one thing which I also want to test is like we have for ATF headless uh, browser thing, right? So yeah. that part and this part I really want to test, uh, because, which is useful if it is going to oh, yeah, RPA. Uh, but a disclaimer: maybe RPA can cost some money. Or license amount it will so it that, will it will cost yeah, yeah. talking about service now man it will cost. <laughs> so, some other cool things that i saw is we did a lot of ip address changes uh, i would call them like yes. ip ip address validation ipv6 before conversion like data migration it's like the first time i've seen service now release of <laughs> ability to migrate a string to like an ip a, a, a different type of field so that's kind of uh, really cool. Um, One thing which I would like to really just say here was the Glide aggregate improvement. They have mm -hmm. bought one API which will set the window for the aggregate. Yeah, uh, I didn't put I'm, it on here because I, I I didn't I didn't know if it if it worked yet, <laughs> so I didn't test it. Uh, but but it does look nice. It <laughs> does look nice. Yeah, me and Drew uh, we will have um, maybe we can have you also, Dorian, then to discuss yeah. that in one of our video. So, so the, the interesting part about it is like, they're, they're still working on Glide aggregate where Glide query is supposed to be the future, right? So yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, <laughs> useful if you have the, you know, Glide aggregate. If you go right? on the script include table, there are like thousands of those things and in each one of them, they have either Glide aggregate or Glide record. So yeah. it will take time to go through them and upgrade those things. I thought another cool thing is about this change success. So they're essentially trying to get data around like how successful are your are your changes getting into you know production or into some system versus like ones that back out. So it's kind of cool that they're providing you know a PA dashboard and a bunch of functions in order to determine how successful you are at your change management process. Um, mm. They've also bumped up now PA can handle 10 million records without coughing um, or hiccuping. That's, that sounds pretty cool. Um, attachment encryption I saw was interesting. You know, being able to uh, and encrypt an attachment was probably a very common feature in the government space where they don't want anyone, not everyone to just be able to see attachments. So I think that's probably a, will be used a lot um, in, in some of those secure environments. 
um, the data privacy to anonymize with rollback. I thought, I mean, like, I get that all the time. We want to clone from, you know, prod to sub prod, but there's sensitive data in some of the tables. So then we just exclude the whole table and then it makes testing really hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I welcome it. And your list of exclude tables, preserve tables. <laughs> Just Keep on increasing. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I also saw that's probably a big for user admin or service now admins is that data filtration on tables. So yep. being able to easily filter out without creating an ACL um, who can view records or who can view a table. So I heard that ACLs are getting scoped or something. We are getting some admin workspace as well. Oh, yes, mm. I did. I do have that on here. There's like an admin center. So we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it. And then I, I think the elephant in the room, ES12 is coming. <laughs> Indeed. And then uh, for ES12, I just a shout out on 5th of August, there August. is one uh, LCSH live coding happy hour on this topic. So nice. And this guy yeah. doesn't leave any opportunity to do shameless plugs. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be interesting because I'm I'm all for you know ES12, but like the issue I see is you know because it's not going to be support supported in global on launch. Yeah. Yeah. Is it going to be worth it to do stuff in ES12 until the whole platform supports ES12? Um, yeah, and then now you have to have admins understand both ES12 and you know, yes, 2015, right? So true. there is some, you know, controversy or discussions that are going to happen at an architect level to determine whether or not you should uh, use it. Yeah. And also the user experience analytics. Mm -hmm. I am using it already. Uh, the analytics center basically to track how employee center is performing or behaving with respect to performance and all those things. Also with AI search, which you mentioned, uh, Dorian, mm -hmm. because I think it's an amazing feature. And yeah. what improvements they have done and bought in Tokyo will help the organizations who has more load on their system. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think ServiceNow has really doubled down on getting data for admins to provide to the organization. Before it was really hard. You're building a bunch of reports and and now you kind of get uh, dashboards um, in order to to make it easier to to sell to the business or show uh, value to the business. Yeah. Um, One right. thing maybe from this, uh, yeah, wh yeah. what do you think about script table flow runner API? Because I think that's again a great great improvement. Um, yeah, man. That too with the roles and kind of a thing. You can test your flows. You don't need to run everything. It's simply like uh, when we can't impersonate, we have APIs to uh, script down how to impersonate a user kind of thing. So it, this would be good for testing and all of those things. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can put some logic as well so that yeah. your flow understand different scenarios for same item. Like if someone is requesting something, if he's an admin, then do, perform this way in the flow as admin or this is something that way. It would be useful. Yeah, I, think um, it's, I think it's going to be really good when you have like a, a scripted rest endpoint that you want yeah. to then call a flow. Um, yeah. I think this is going to be really nice to be able to security lock that, um, like how that uh, flow is run based on who's hitting your rest API. So I think that's the biggest benefit that I see from it. So, so which means that we have a parameter, extra parameter to pass a flow name inside this api is it I, I it can be something the, like that i think this we, is for the quick api um, yeah okay. quick and then thing so basically you will have two more functions i guess one is quick i, I don't remember the other name uh it would be like earlier we, when we used to have api to run flows it just take the flow name and on the flow level you configure how the flow will run but now you would be able to pass on the roles or the type of a user basically that's the role only which with which role you want to run that thing yeah yeah cool let's talk about flow designer since i uh. feel like it is upgraded in every release <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
just before the call we started with the <laughs> top item right convert <laughs> item to surplus oh my god um but i must say because i am a big fan of citizen development uh, program uh, and if people start using this according to me i think we need to train them again on this topic that how they can convert it uh, or should we i i personally think that there should be an option to hide this from them <laughs> interesting yeah so the reason i love it the most is i think about like when i'm coding and then sometimes you want to like like refactor a function like you realize you just repeated some some sort of function twice right now in flow designer i i, I instantly just start with subflow i don't even like start with flow originally and so this is nice where i can start with flow and if it stays simple then you know go with it and then if it gets more complex then then you can you know convert it yeah, yeah. We got we got we got someone in chat says data filtration on tables for before he sales a winner. I, I think I think everyone's gonna love that one. Yeah. Because yep. we're like essentially like condition building, you know, um, uh, data specific records or things on tables without having to do complex ACLs sounds like amazing. Well, so, is it more like recent... a query BR or something? I'm not sure what's uh... mm. So uh, the data filtration, yeah. it's like I essentially like a, a table that um, will allow you to exclude records or exclude specific criteria. It's kind of like user criteria a little bit for um, very query, specific... query business, right? More of yeah, a query but, business. But, yeah, but exactly before, um, but, but that's complex to potentially yeah. create, right? So um, they, they made uh, it a little bit simpler. But, but recently I did one small project about report view ACLs and that was already a great success because we always used to get something in pen testing that you have public reports that can be accessible uh, from an unauthenticated user. Why? What? So, and the SNC internal role, external role also helped us to now secure the more secure more platform. And this is addition on top of it. So I think we are improving in security. Yeah, awesome. Um, I, I, you talked about citizen developers. So now you'll be able to allow people to view flow designer uh, or flow designs without them having the permission to create or change them. I think this is big is before you allow agents to be able to view a workflow, right? And you, you didn't need special permission to see it. And this allows them to be able to, to see configuration or have QA validation or some sort of testers or auditing to be able to view without having to give them uh, extra permission. But I I still have to test one thing then in Tokyo that the execution things of the flow mm -hmm. were only visible to the flow designer role or there is some role which is kind of an admin role uh, which gives more access to the person. Mm -hmm. And we had to give that if you want to see the execution of a particular flow. Uh, at least that table, not yeah. when you test it, but when you actually want to see the execution list, you have to give that role because that table has that ACL on it. Mm -hmm. And that service now clearly mentioned it. If you give this role, please consider, please keep in mind that it can be equivalent to an admin role. So I need yeah. to test that if that is being improved or not. Yeah, I wonder if if that isn't the case, like maybe they that's still blocked in Tokyo, then like you, you should be creating a custom ACL, right? Just to to make that easier. But there is an issue uh, there that uh, I need to find the application scope there uh, because uh, yeah. each flow has okay. its own application scope and then the data separation comes into picture, oh, wow. which I don't want. That's a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, also, this... flow supports. Oh, go ahead, Drew. I was saying like this feature for allowing user to see flow, it will be more useful if we follow the leading practices, like putting on the comments on every step of the flow so that they can understand otherwise i have seen certain flows where people just design the flow <laughs> but no one knows what is that yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, maybe uh dorian you remember we were having some discussion on process automation designer so mm -hmm. i think they have also kept that in mind that the process owner should also see the cross or, or the other flows and that is the reason m might be they bought this feature because 
both are different processes, but flow designer is embedded in PAD. Mm -hmm. So maybe a process owner needs a visibility into a flow. So I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's probably a, a lot of different reasons on why you'd want that. I, I mean, I think it's having more granular view access roles, I think is just more helpful. Yes, it's a lot to maintain and manage a bunch of roles, but like having the flexibility when you need it, like, like I feel like as an implementer, you're like, oh, if if it has the view role, boom, done. Like I'm, I'm like, you know, easy. But if it's not, then you're creating, you know, multiple ACLs before query business rules, and yep. it's just kind of painful. So, um, cool. And then moving, like they have archive operations in Flow Designer now. Um, I think this is interesting. I, I don't, I don't, I didn't, run, I've never run into this use case where you have to like try to zip a file or compress a file or uh, unzip a file, but I can it's, imagine there's some useful use cases for it. Yeah, it's usually for auditing. Like you need to, uh, we usually have a process where we need to go on every incident, print set PDF and then zip it and mail it to one of the auditors from the auditing firm. Mm -hmm. So that could be that. Cool. Uh, I think I, I recently saw that, you know, you can now run a flow with a personal OAuth token. I thought it was really hard before, like you always had to use the OAuth that was uh, configured in the system, but now you providing a personal OAuth just makes it easier to, to test stuff. Um, and then I, I think when it relates to the rest step improvements, which is kind of integration hub, not so much flow designer, but they pretty much improved header. Uh, so like you can provide like a duplicate header. I think this is like an interesting one because I don't know what the, the standard requirement is on like, if you wanted to pass the same header multiple times, like why, why you'd want to do that. Um, but there's probably some RFC protocol that supports it. And now ServiceNow is catching up with it. Um, yeah. Uh, the live coding happy hour two weeks ago where Pranav was coding something with Dhruv. Um, that time we had this discussion that maybe two headers should be supported because right now if you try to save it it gives you the error that duplicate error information provided yeah well now Great. it's now it's live <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, and then i know they improved the flow diagramming for anyone that doesn't visual uh, hasn't visualized their flows yet they've improved it to add more triggers and use cases so that's super awesome and they've also increased the retention of the flow execution so like more context records being saved to en enable better debugging because that's one thing that workflow did really good is you could really you know debug uh, most things yeah they're bringing on some flow logic as well like i don't know what they are bringing now i'm able to do everything with those flow logics but it's good to have something new yeah so then let's talk about new modules um so really the only ones that I'm like super excited about is probably the admin center, which is what you were kind of alluding to, Drew, on like, yeah. again, enabling admins to get more data to then provide that to the organization, to sell the business case, to to show the value of, of service down. Like the admin center seems like really cool. You, they, they're providing blueprints to help you analyze your maturity level. Um, so it looks like there's gonna be a lot uh, in store for, for admins to view. You need that because the kind of implementations people are doing, you need to restrict them. It's a way of, you know, not showing you the all the things on managing for you. It's it's a way in the direction of restricting what you can do, so that you don't fall on those bad traps. And then I think the other big one is the ServiceNow Vault that they're calling. Like so much focus on security tools now <laughs> we have they have like secrets yeah. management you can verify code signing of the apps there's cloud encryption um those are kind of all related to security that i think you know security is going to be really happy for um when evaluating service now and then i i added a few others like employee center is getting manager hub so or i think it's employee center pro um, so you can now get better views of what, a man, as a manager, how the employees are doing in service now. And then they've also enabled better badge reader integration, which I think is cool for both workspace delivery and also like a walk-up experience. 
I was going to say the last thing, walk-up experience, walk because experience. we are trying right now. Uh, it will be live, and there we had there's we are not doing the integration, but security had a concern that I can impersonate, for example, Dorian you and uh, check in on be on your behalf. So it can also happen that I can check in on behalf of the CEOs, <laughs> and the badge reader will actually help in that case. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for it too. Um, and then new experiences, as you can see, I was like <laughs> getting this entire leg <laughs> filled up. Um, I'm excited. Surveys and assessments are getting a redesign. Like, I feel like getting customer feedback is always like super awesome in general. So, like, making it a better experience to resume a survey if you started one, to take an assessment, like, you know, thank you ServiceNow for, you know, making that a, a redesigned experience for people, both on mobile and on the portal. Um, chat interfaces. So I, I think the summary here is just more configuration is possible. They're constantly improving. I think they're calling it conversation interfaces or something like that, which covers, you know, virtual agent and, and, and other experiences. But um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, the document widget. So I, I didn't even know this existed, but like document management seems to get like a little bit of love this release where you can essentially like upload documents to the document service. So, you know, version control and things like that. For, and mm -hmm. then you can also modify which record that's like attached to. So I think there's some sort of like trying to make document management easier and they provided a widget for the portal to, to for end users to do it. Have they provided a widget or a component like a uh, th this is a widget yeah this is uh, they for for service portal okay. I, I i mean there is a, a long list of uh next experience components that they've improved <laughs> on that yeah. I, I mean i would you could take an entire uh session on that i think but the most important thing at least for uh, me is the item service operations thing because yeah. the mcr team really needs it um because they need an eagle eye view on all the services on their work what alerts are coming how they can work around it um because right now we have an experience which was tied with the agent workspace so mm -hmm. there is only one workspace but now it, this is coming so we can have a dedicated workspace for them uh, which will allow us to do some extra things and reduce our maintenance because if I change something on the agent workspace, it used to affect them also. Very great. Yeah, and I think agent workspace for HR is getting an improvement. I think it's it's in UI Builder now. I actually don't know yeah. if it's the old one. So there there's lots of improvements there. There's a new record page for UI Builder. There's probably going to be a session on just that because I think there's. The, the record page is essentially used in almost every agent workspace. Um, mm -hmm. The duplicate a PAD process, I think is amazing. I, I get Perfect. feedback at yeah. knowledge to, to improve, like even copying a stage as well, or like a, a lane or an action. So hopefully they'll improve that in the future as well. But, you know, if you have two similar tables and you wanted to copy a process, like it's, it was really painful in, in PAD before Tokyo. So. And also, I think recently we saw that there was one more improvement to add button on a stage, on a step. Yeah. It was a, a interactive button. And uh, to make it uh, easier, because right now it was really hard. Yeah, it, they have made it like we know how. Initially, I struggled a lot to add that particular button, but now it's so simple because we were not aware of it. Yeah. And uh, recently, Brad created one video on that, uh, which is really good. Nice. Um, I think they also added reference qualifiers like a, in, in PAD. So like you only want to see the data you want in the reference type field. So you can like mm. select what table it is or something like that. Um, I, I don't know what that looks like yet, but I think just any, any quality of life things in PAD is always going to uh, be a good thing. Um, I think they also, there is, there was like a line item on AI search for the unified nav bar. So I think just 
unifying search across the platform, both for portal and internal, I think is just gonna gonna be really good. So sooner or later, Zing is is slowly being deprecated. <laughs> New store apps. So this is the one for you, Ashu. Run ATFs yeah. in the cloud <laughs> instead of on your computer. So not only just headless, I'm assuming it sounds like you have the ability to run UI-based ATFs without human intervention. There's not enough information so, on this, but this is what it looks like. I assume then that we can automatically spin up a VM in a AWS or Azure and then do this. Oh, yes, that that will already save the cost for maintaining the server on prime. Again, it just says cloud runner, so I'm assuming what cloud runner cloud. means. <laughs> it said it's because it's a store app; it's not in the release notes, right, of some sort. So I have to wait for that release yeah. to, to actually happen. Might be running on service now cloud instead of our cloud. Uh, that uh, then I need to prepare uh, security <laughs> documentation. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah um, yeah again like i think it's going to be cool if it helps with any ui based um uh atfs so whichever route it, they, they they go with it um journey designers i'm not big into the hr space um specifically but it no. uh, looks like they are redesigning the journey designer for life cycle events and journey accelerators into kind of like a unified single experience so Look for it on the HRSD side of, of things. Another slide that I couldn't fit enough information. <laughs> um, quality, I call it quality of life. So quality notes, like, of I, didn't, life. I didn't really like do it by product. I've really just tried to like, you know, high level kind of <laughs> capture some of this stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, so I love uh, the bulk delete and update records as like essentially queuing up a scheduled job that has rollback capabilities. I think that's just like super awesome because I remember like having to create a scheduled job just to run a script at the middle of the night. And then I would, would always be worried that did it actually run the script and, and keep, capture all the things. But if, if ServiceNow makes it a very easy experience, I think um, that's going to be really nice, a nice change. I think for me, CI attestation is very important to maintain the quality of your CMDB and to date, because now if we have this, we can actually have the data stewards to do the attestation once a year or once a quarter, which will actually uh, tell us how accurate our CMDB is. Also with respect to CMDB, is uh, uh, sorry, discovery. Is your discovery getting all the data or not? Is it updating the data properly or not? So all these things, I think CI attestation can help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything, anything that's like bulk, bulk update, I hope so. bulk change, like I think is going to be huge for admins. If you had to manually clean up orphan CIs or or even the cascading dependent CI retirement, like yeah. that sounds so nice. <laughs> this this was a pain deleting the dependent CI and retiring those CIs. So. Mm, yeah. so. It looked like the language selection for guest user sounds awesome. Like being able to go to the portal, yep. your guest user change the language. Like, oh, that's, that sounds super awesome. Um, there is some speed up things, right? So scoped cache uh, in memory. So there's, you know, ways that they've improved the speed of when you're in a scoped application. It looks like they are caching the audience that's viewing the EC portal. So the user criteria doesn't constantly be uh, run. You can bulk translate KB articles. I thought that was a really good one because manually it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. Um, you can now put feedback control on who can rate at the knowledge base level rather than just the article level. Um, so they increased it. They, they did more feedback controls. Uh, I thought this was a good one because I feel like this is every other major SaaS tool is set up redirects. So when things like are instead of four oh fours everywhere, just you know, say it's like pass it to another article that um, is relevant. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, huge one for admins: catalog builder updates get their own update set. If you have ever used catalog builder, it is so painful right now because you make one change and it up it adds everything in the catalog to your yeah. update set. 
So kudos <laughs> to them for, for at least making it in a separate update set. Um, I think there's just other other things passing a language as a query param on portal so you can do more translation. I felt like Tokyo was very international in a lot of their changes. So um, yep. definitely a lot of focus on multi, uh, multi-language things. Um, what else we got? Let's see. I think that was it. That was that was a a good summary for what I could dig up. Um, I mean, there's yep. there's still a ton more, right? There's like not only new features. There's like things that they've changed on existing features. Um, there's new properties that they've added. Um, new components that might come in. Oh, I mean, yeah, the new UI builder components. Um, I think like the service catalog got a bunch of new things such as like there's a new system property that um, that's related to the catalog item attachment variable. So there's like one issue there where like it wouldn't delete the record if you tried to move it. And, and so like um, you can, it looked like there's like encryption on um, variables for like mask variables. So I think there's like a ton of stuff in catalogs um, that was changed as well. Um, I'm like quickly um, uh, reading through some of the, the other ones to see if I like missed anything. Uh, I, I think I liked one for mid server. Okay. And uh, that was about the secret management because uh, there are many questions currently coming from the security teams about the secret management, how, how secure it is. So we, are, we can also now back up the key store, which is very important. If something goes wrong with the server, you still back up your key store. So that part has improved. And then uh, we can manage our secrets, passwords, and the API keys um, within service now using a group, let's say. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. And I think that can be, but I don't know how, how, how it will look like, but I think that is also a great improvement, which we have at least with respect to item space. Yeah, it will be like, like you don't uh, need to, I mean, I have experienced that when you do external credential discovery, where you get credential from something like Sabi or Arc or Pam portal or something, it's tough. It doesn't work that well, but if you have keys stored in service now, I think that would be much better. Mm-hmm. So it's now vault, vault that said, that's the app, right? Yeah, and I, yeah. And I also know in like, uh, I recently read that like, they're gonna reduce the noise in commit changes. So if you use Studio and you use like source control, like, like it, it's really hard to like review PRs, right? Because <laughs> like, you're essentially seeing just a bunch of XML diffs and like trying to find the relevant ones can be uh, kind of tough. So it looks like they're reducing some of the, the yep. system generated fields. So that should make it easier. Um, and with respect to licenses, there was one improvement made, uh, which I was reading through the notes on the subscription management dashboard or on the record. Now they are going to link the definition with the product, which right. will help as admins to understand which definition is used. Uh, because. Cool. Right now, I always have to go to service now, ask which definition, please tell me, uh, and then dig into it. But license is always a pain. It's always, it will be. I also saw that um, on Workspace now, an agent can personalize a form so they can show or hide their own fields. Or like you could do that in the platform relatively easy, but now at least you can do it in Workspace as well if there's fields that let's say an admin was, didn't show hide relatively easy, at least uh, on the agent side, they can, they can clean it up. Um, form on the list view, they can clear the form fields as well. In, in, in workspace, right? Can, they can personalize it now. Okay. Um, I think that's it guys. Any other, uh, oh, they did add, so from a security standpoint, they, for the topics for EC, um, topic taxonomy, they added more roles to enable better management of it. So you can give someone specific permissions and they can now like someone in HR, right? Or someone in IT 
can manage the topics and their subtopics. So um, it's easier for them to, to make portal changes. So. Yep. Yeah, and from CSGM, like we, uh, we are just hoping to get those life cycle stage and state field. Mm. I mean, that migration piece, I hope that might come in Tokyo because we are currently going for a set thing and it might be a pain. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Any, uh, any last things? Um, excited. Just a reminder, like all these things we talked about, again, we have no idea if they're actually coming in. We don't work for service now, so don't make any investment choices <laughs> or like decisions yeah. <laughs> on, on it. Um, and starting tomorrow, there's both a webinar True. and the early access um, developer for your instances, so you can upgrade those. And there was a couple other shout outs, Ashu, that we wanted to remind people of. Live coding. No, uh, I think. Oh, you can stay again, yeah, August 5th. That is coming. August 5th, you see, I'm coming on live coding APR again for the yeah. I don't know if I'm coming, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they are doing on ES12 and on 4th, Chuck is doing the Tokyo thing. And um, on 20th, you know, me and Dhruv will be creating short videos about the releases. In, yeah, and uh, on 20th August, we have a uh, Mavericks event. It's a event which we organize. So Dhruv started it, and we will have uh, Chuck presenting in that on the Tokyo release again. So please join us in that event. Also the Registration link will be published soon within a within a couple of days, and then you can register for it. Thanks, uh, Dorian, for giving the stage. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Thanks for thanks for joining, and glad to glad to get everyone on here. Thank you. Take it easy, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Bye, 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 guys. Bye. <laughs> I like that sound. It should be a live video.